Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and the crypto market is still going well post-election. Um, the market cap is at 2.51 trillion now. Yesterday it was like 2.47. Bitcoin got back up, crossed 75,000 again. It's hanging pretty good up that way. All Everything's doing well. Bit, uh, I mean, XRP, um, I saw it when I woke up, it was at like 55 cents. So everything is on the move. I did a poll just because I wanted to get everybody's thoughts on what I was thinking about this morning. And my question was this, what is the market cap of all of crypto right now if anti-American Gary Gensler and Elizabeth Warren had never begun Operation Choke Point 2.0, but instead encouraged and allowed crypto innovation to flourish? Because that and way beyond is where this rocket ship is going. Um, well, turns out most people think we would be in the five to 10 trillion market cap area, which would be double to quadruple what the market is right now, basically. I believe that it's possible we could be into this 10 to 20 trillion by now. If, I mean, we've been in this for three and a half years, okay, plus. Um, so, but the point is, is imagine having people running our government who are intentionally going out of their way to hold back innovative growth in the United States because they're trying to protect Jamie Dimon and his friends. I mean, that's, that is what one of the many things that is so significant about what happened, just what happened just now in this election. Because they, they have literally walked from Washington to New York City that the the entrenched powers have literally tried to help the incumbents at the expense of everybody else out there and it's time for it to change it's time for people to be held accountable too i don't think that they should let gary gensler have the option of going and retiring in style and oh his punishment is that he got fired no this guy needs to be investigated and and more he needs to be, I mean, he needs to be investigated, not for what he did at the SEC, but what he did before that and the SEC. Brad Garlinghouse, well, this age, well, Brad Garlinghouse, he was on fire too, which I, I, I had a hunch that he was a Trump supporter. I know he can't come out and say it, but it's pretty obvious. Well, this aged well seems like they realized it too late to change course. The misguided anti-crypto leaders and their ally cronies, including Senator Warren and Gensler, played a key role in the Red Reset. And this is one of his tweets he's referring back to. Given how close that the last election was, I predict that this will end up being the issue that pushes swing state voters away from the Dems. When will they realize Senator Warren is leading them off a cliff? All right, then we had this. Um, this guy had said after today's election, the country may get a new SEC chair, but it's not obvious that Trump or Harris could fire Gary Gensler. The case law and statute does not uh, do not say POTUS can fire G Gensler just because they want to, to own the chair, wants their own chair. And, he, and Brad Garlinghouse rightfully so says, the Dems managed to fire Biden and anoint Kamala Harris without any voters, by the way, Without statute or case law, I think POTUS can figure this one out. <laughs> exactly. Um, look at this. Coins kid, is XRP on its way to $4? A new all-time high for uh, this crypto. Hold the green line and take out the orange line and run to the upper red line would not surprise me. Wouldn't surprise me either. Um Okay, check it out. John Deaton um, did not win in Massachusetts, but that's okay. We get him back. He's, he and uh, Jeremy Hogan and James Murphy, who is Metal Lawman, are now going to uh, do a live cast Tuesday, November 12th. Um, and they're going to discuss the, case, the Ripple case and more. 
Eleanor Terrett looks like she went to uh, the SEC and said, I reached out, asked whether Gary Gensler plans to finish out the year as head of the agency or step down ahead of real Donald Trump inauguration in January. A spokesman declined to comment. I think the coward is going to step down because I think that's what cowards do. And this is from Coin Telegraph. Crypto lawyer says SEC's Mark Uyeda, Uyeda has a chance of becoming the next chair, while crypto mom Hester Pierce is unlikely to replace Gary Gensler. I don't want her to replace him. I think that she's terrible. I think that she could have blown the whistle on Ethgate and a lot of other things for all these years and chose to just toe the line and play the game and just issue an occasional statement that she disagrees with Gary Gensler. How worthless was that the last three and a half years? Completely. There's a time in the world, there's a time for being bold, and she's meek. And that's the fact, Jack. Not enough show to get to every asset class that is rallying hard today. Bitcoin certainly among them. Take a look, almost 75,000. As investors are betting on a friendlier environment for that industry under a second Trump administration, uh, Mackenzie Segalos is following that story for us. Mackenzie. Hey, Scott, Bitcoin briefly surging to a new record high as investors bet that Donald Trump will deliver on his pro-crypto promises, especially with a Republican-controlled Senate behind him and after getting more than $25 million from crypto donors. Now, Trump's main pledge is to fire SEC Chair Gary Gensler, who's brought more than 100 enforcement actions against industry leaders like Coinbase and Robinhood. Those stocks are pumping 25% and 17% respectively today, with Robinhood on pace for its best day in over two years. Bitcoin miners are also getting a boost this morning, with Trump having promised on the campaign trail that all future Bitcoin will be mined in the U.S. Marathon, Riot, and BitDigital are all trading up more than 14% and driving small caps higher as well. Now, in terms of the market outlook, multiple analysts are expecting Bitcoin will hit $100,000 before Trump's inauguration, especially if he delivers on promises like launching a strategic national crypto stockpile with the $15 billion worth of Bitcoin that it already has on its books from asset seizures. And Scott, Bitcoin now up 68% year to date after briefly hitting that new all-time high overnight. All right. Good look at that uh, for us. Mackenzie, thank you. If he does that, it is game over, not just for Bitcoin, but for crypto. Here's Kevin O'Leary, who I've disagreed with a lot over uh, at times. He's right about this. That's why America works. It has worked for 200 years. When it gets too crazy, it fixes itself. And whether you love Trump or you hate him, every Democrat owes him a thank you very much, Mr. President. By the way, as the markets, the poly market and all these election markets were moving, Bitcoin went up exponentially. Yes, I'm long Bitcoin. Are you? <laughs> so you're buying later. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, and then this is about that strategic reserve. I think she's already, uh, Senator Loomis has already um, written a letter about this. Um, and then look, this is Elon Musk tweet. It's him and his son. Uh, I guess that's XA12. And then there's Donald Trump. And he, I guess this is Latin, Novus Ordo Seclorum, which reminds me, don't, don't forget that, uh, what Trump was closing his rallies with, Nessum Dorma. I think that's what it is, Nessum Dorma. But anyway, this Latin phrase means new order of the ages. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, and then uh, gold, when Trump got elected, gold went down because um, all of a sudden there was optimism in the dollar, I guess. Okay, well, here's Jim Rickard's take on gold after post-election. And the gold <clears throat> sell-up, Jim, is this yeah. just you know, a one-day reaction? What do you see here? Yeah, gold is going to get a lot stronger, and it's not, it's not like we're not going back to a gold standard or anything of the kind, but here's the thing. Gold is being driven by factors that are bigger than Trump. Presidency is a big deal. It looks like the Republicans might have it, what we call a trifecta where you get the White House, the Senate. They, the Republicans have the Senate. House is still close, but it looks like they'll get the House maybe only by a few votes. That's the trifecta when you have the White House, the Senate, and the House of Representatives, and then that means treaties. Uh, tax reconciliation, um, Supreme Court appointment. There's a whole bunch of things that you can get done if you do that. Uh, and it's not, none of it's bad for gold, but it's not really pertinent. But gold is being driven by things that are bigger than Trump, bigger than the White House. The central bank buying, the BRICS, de-dollarization, uh, the fact that the U.S. froze and is in the process of stealing 
$300 billion worth of Russian-owned U.S. Treasury securities that were lawfully acquired. If you're anybody, China, Saudi Arabia, Taiwan, Japan, anybody, you say, hey, you guys, you, the United States, just stole, not froze, but stole $300 billion of Treasury securities. Why do I want to be in Treasuries? Well, you have to be in some because there aren't many good alternatives, but you're going to go to gold. So the, the gold trade, gold is going to go higher. Um, it's, it's bigger than Trump is how I would put it. Bigger than Trump. Okay, um, now this is uh, Bitwise CIO saying that we've entered the golden age of crypto. He wants to give his takeaway, this is a good video, his takeaways from the Trump election. I have three big takeaways from last night's election. The first big thing is we are entering the golden age of crypto. For the last four and indeed the last eight years, crypto has been operating with one or maybe two arms tied behind its back. It's faced aggressive persecution from the SEC, multiple lawsuits, and a regulatory cloud that kept mainstream out of crypto. That is going to be washed away in my expectation in the first hundred days of the new administration. And we're going to get a fair balanced playing field where we'll see what crypto can do. That will mean stablecoin legislation, it'll be market clarity legislation, and most importantly, it will remove the cloud hanging over crypto and allow institutional investors to evaluate it for what it is. From my perspective, that's going to be more flows and more adoption and a strong bull market for years to come. The second thing to remember is that we were already in a bull market prior to last night's election with multiple significant catalysts pushing us towards all-time highs. We had record institutional investment into crypto. You can see that in the $23 billion of net flows into Bitcoin ETFs this year, which, by the way, I expect to accelerate in 2025. We had the effect of the Bitcoin halving in April of this year, reducing supply in the market. We had record fiscal deficits. U.S. debt is now $36 trillion and adding a trillion dollars every 100 days. And I don't expect that to slow down in a new administration. We had real world use cases emerging like stable coins and prediction markets and gaming. And we had blockchain technology improving at an accelerating rate. I was already very bullish before last night's election. Now I'm the most bullish I've ever been. The third thing I would add is a note of caution. All that yesterday's election does is put crypto on a level playing field. There are both good and bad projects in crypto. Think yeah, I think the, the point there is just like the dot-com boom bust, just because you put dot-com on the end of it doesn't make it a good project or a, or a real company. There's got to be some a, a, a real business plan, all the above, you know. Okay. Um, and we're going to go in DAIXRP.com. Boy, I bet you the paper shredders in Washington, D.C. are humming right about now. Because for those of you that think Trump's going to come in and just be Mr. Nice Guy after the way things happened last time where he left uh, people alone, but then they came after him after he tried to be gracious, it's not happening. This time, you're going to see... And he's not just going to be going after people for the sake of going after them. He's going to be, he's going to turn that DOJ and and the the power of DC, or the power of the presidency, on the people who who really committed crimes that committed crimes to try to stop him a political a popular political opponent opponent. That's who is going down, and they need to go down in order to save this country, and so. I assure you, we're we're in, uh, the, there's a reference in what I'm about to show you to where we are. We're in D Day plus one. This is not Victory Day. We're, this thing's this has to be finished. The people that did the lawfare, the people who the people who have have been breaking the law left and right for the last not not just three and a half years, but the last ten plus years. And then you got the, those files of the island guy, and then you got the, the party guy, and all that stuff. And, and we've been living through all these elites getting away with whatever they wanted. A lot of them backed 
um, Kamala Harris because they didn't want to be found out. Bill Gates back to Kamala Harris. Reed Hoffman back to Kamala Harris. Elon Musk even called them out. Well, you, whatever you want to call it, uh, I, I think that it's riding the country by making these people pay. I'm about to show you what's coming and why and why this happened. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family. Away we go.